be covering the unsolved disappearance of the Godard family from Normandy, France in September 1999. The family consisted of 44-year-old general practitioner and acupuncturist Yves Godard, his second wife, 44-year-old Marie France, and their two children, 6-year-old Camille and 4-year-old Marius. Yves also shared two sons with his ex-wife, who were 15 and 17 at the time and Marie also had a son who was 15 and a daughter who was 16 at the time. Marie's children lived with their father, but she was very close with them and saw them often. It was also reported that Eve was not very close to his two older sons. Eve and Marie were married in 1994 in an intimate ceremony attended by only the couple's children. Camille was only a few months old when they had married. Friends of the couple described them as well suited for each other. After getting married, they started slowly pushing away long-time friends as they wanted to spend more time together as a family and grow their family. Two years after the birth of Camille, they had welcomed Marius. The couple both loved theatre and often went out to see shows. Marie, however, felt that Eve had worked too much, not only had his practice at a general practitioner, but also at the house that the couple had bought and started renovating. Eve was described as a very caring and attentive doctor, but he had his medical license suspended for three months in 1996. He was accused of treating serious medical conditions with newfangled medical treatments, as well as prescribing medications that were not approved in France. Eve had over the years become more and more interested in homeopathy, hypnosis, magnet therapy and spiritual therapy. Eve had ended up leaving the practice that he had shared with a fellow doctor and started his own practice where he specialized in acupuncture. Marie France had not worked since the birth of Camille, but she begrudgingly accepted working at Eve's practice three days a week as a secretary. This professional turn of events for Eve led him to join a trade union, the Confederation for the defense of salesmen. It is known for being a labor trade type union for small business owners, with the directors who openly encouraged its members to not pay social contributions to the government and flirt with tax evasion. This suited Eve well, as he hadn't paid any social contributions in at least three years. Eve had by 1999 owed the government around 300,000 euros in back taxes and they sent a bailiff around to Eve at least every 48 hours to remind him of the debt that he had to pay. In early August 1999, he had told a neighbor that he squeezed dry and tired and wouldn't be taking a vacation anytime soon. Marie France by this point was also stressed out by their debt, and she had become severely depressed. She went to see a sophrologist specializing in hypnosis to treat her depression Sophrology has been called a method and a practice in philosophy that uses the mind-body connection to increase awareness and conscious living with the aim of enabling individuals to create more balance and harmony in themselves and in the world around them. There she spoke of her daily struggles and her husband who is paying less and less attention to her. One day, allegedly, she even made a pass at the sophrologist, which he gently turned down. She also noted these qualms of her down in her diary about how Eve had paid no attention to her and that she had been unhappy. The 30th of August 1999 was a normal day for Eve. He went to his practice, consulted patients all day before closing up shop and heading home. On 31st August, he cancelled all his consultations for the day. He finished up some paperwork and got some things in order at his practice and closed up his office early for the day. He then took his two children fishing in plants in Plunkery, 16 kilometers or 10 miles west of their family home. Marie France also spoke to her older daughter around 5 p.m. on that day, mentioning nothing of going on a vacation the next day.
On 1 September, Eve and his two children, Camille and Marius, leave their house and drive to the ocean side town of St. Malo, where they arrive around 10.30. The three of them rent a sailboat, which Eve had reserved on the 17th of August already. The boat was a Sun Odyssey 13, named Nick. This type of sailboat had been relatively new at that point, being manufactured between 1992 and 1996. It was around 9 meters or 30 feet long and can sleep up to 6 people. Marie France did not seem to join them on the boat, as it was only Eve, Marius and Camille noted as passengers on the boat. Godard told the owner of the Nick that he had wanted to go on a cruise and he would be returning on the 5th of September. Eve was an experienced sailor and upon renting the boat he checked all of the navigation equipment thoroughly while the kids dozed on the dock. They then stopped by a local supermarket where Eve purchased plastic bags, a mop, some cloths, cleaning products and two bottles of whiskey around 11.30. He left the items apart from the whiskey in his Volkswagen camper van, which he had left parked at the port. The tides that day would have only allowed them to set sail around 2 p.m., but the time that they departed is not known. On the 2nd of September, the boat is stopped by custom agents roving the coast between Cape Erki and Cape Friel for a routine search of the boat. The customs officials noticed a small child sleeping on the boat. They also took note that the motor on the sailboat was running, despite a fair amount of wind that day. They also saw what appeared to be a windsurfing board in its cover at the bow of the boat. One of the custom agents got a strange feeling about how Eve was speaking and acting, and he verified the story he was telling of their plans with the man that rented him the boat in St. Malo. The story of course checked out and the family set sail again. After this inspection, Godard's boat seemed to have remained for a few days near the Bay of Brieg. Several witnesses saw the nick between 2 and 5 September. Among them was a food vendor who sold ice cream crepes and waffles at the small port that testified that Godard and his children came to buy waffles from her on 3 September. The next day, the nick was spotted by a pair of hikers near the Pointe de Menard in Pluise, and they stated that it looked abandoned. On the 5th of September, the day that they were set to return the sailboat to St. Malo, a blow-up dinghy belonging to the Nick was found by a fishing boat about 30 nautical miles, which is 55 kilometers or 30 34 miles off of Bats Island. Inside the dinghy was a rain jacket and a checkbook with the name of Eve Godard inside. Many people have speculated that the items were placed in the dinghy in order to more easily tie it back to the Nick and or lead people to believe that the Godards were in an accident of some sort. But how the jacket and the checkbook ended up in the dinghy is unknown. Coast guards are immediately informed and are worried that something terrible has happened. They do not immediately put the pieces together, but are able to tie the dinghy back to the Nick which at that point cannot be found. No Mayday or SOS calls have been made from the Nick's radio, and the Coast Guard attempts to reach the Nick by radio, but are met with silence. This is when an investigation into the disappearance is opened. On the 7th of September, after speaking to the sailboat's owner and the Coast Guard, Police are starting to piece together that something bad has more than likely happened to the Godard family, but they don't immediately think that it is anything more than a boat accident. They decide to send an army plane over the Brittany coast with hopes that the Nick will be spotted, but they had no luck in spotting it anyway. That same day, police in St. Malo come to the port and inspect Yves Godard's car where he had left it parked. Inside the car, they find morphine and blood along with the cleaning supplies that he had bought and left behind. This discovery forced the investigation to take on more urgency and on 8 September, after obtaining a warrant, investigators searched the Goddard family home. 
Upon entry to the premises, they saw a note on the kitchen table in Eve's handwriting that stated, We're leaving for a few days, we'll be back on Sunday, and it is signed Marie and Eve. The fridge of the house was fully stocked. The house looked tidy yet lived in, and the kids' backpacks were near the entrance door. Everything seemed normal upon first glance downstairs. The police continued the inspection upstairs, where they found blood on the wall in the master bedroom that looked like someone had hastily tried to clean it up. The blood was rather close to the bed and they decided to turn over the mattress, which is when they found a large blood stain that had penetrated nearly half of the mattress. Camille and Marius's rooms were also searched, but nothing out of the ordinary showed up there. Upon further inspection of the bathroom, they found blood in and on the sink and a bloody washcloth lying on top of the sink. They also found a bloody paper towel in the toilet and found traces of paracetamol and meprobamate, a cocktail, when used together calms the nerves. Heading downstairs, they decided to take a closer look at everything after what they had found upstairs which is when they noticed blood drops on the staircase going down. And there was also huge amounts of blood that was found on the sofa. They also found a blanket with traces of blood in the washing machine. The police are starting to wonder what happened. It was clearly noted that Marie France had not been on the sailboat with Eve and the kids. And it was also said that she had despised sailing. Despite the note that Eve had left, saying they were gone for a few days, no one had heard that she was going on holiday, and no one had seen or heard from Marie France since the 31st of August. On the 10th of September, an investigation for involuntary homicide is opened, and an international arrest warrant for Yves Godard is made public. It was noted that due to the amount of blood found in the house, that this person who suffered from the blood loss would not have survived. Blood samples were taken from the house and from Eve's car and had been sent to a lab for testing. On the 16th of September, the results of the blood samples taken came back and were identified as being that of Marie France Godard. It looked more and more as if Eve had killed his wife and fled with their children. Police also inspect Eve Godard's schedule for his acupuncture practice. It seemed as if he had continued to make medical appointments for his patients for September 1st, 2nd and 3rd, despite the fact that he had rented the nick on this August 17th for the dates September 1 to 5. He cancelled the August 31st appointments, but the appointments for 1, 2 and 3 September remained. Police started wondering whether he premeditated this whole thing whatever this whole thing was that happened because they were still not sure what the hell was going on. Even stranger, upon further investigation, they discovered that the patients scheduled for the appointments on 1 to 3 September are either existing patients that had never actually made appointments or completely made up names. So it seemed that Eve had falsified his entire schedule for the beginning of September and it was unclear why. The appointments were very clearly made in his handwriting, so it was also confirmed that it had not been Marie France that had made these entries. Also on the 16th of September, 11 days after the dinghy was discovered, amateur sailors off the coast of the Channel Islands of Guernsey and Alderney discovered a life jacket belonging to the Nick. Another week later, on the 23rd of September, the inflatable survival raft of the Nick was recovered half deflated on a beach at Lime Bay in Dorset, England, in the United Kingdom. Strangely, the canvas sun protection roof had been cut off from the raft and was missing completely. This was totally baffling the French investigators. They were leaning heavily towards the theory that Godard had murdered his wife and fled with the children, but these latest discoveries brought chaos into the investigation. According to scientists, Scientific experts, given the ocean currents for that period, neither of those items could have just drifted to where they were found. They stated that they had to have been scattered there deliberately. 
Upon further inspection of the raft, it was noticed that the device used to keep the raft inflated had also been ripped off. The raft could not stay inflated for more than 72 hours without this device. There was still no sign, however, of the Nick or the Goddard family. About a month later, on the 14th of October 1999, a hotel owner on the Isle of Man claimed that Godar and his children had stayed in his hotel between 7 and 14 September. The Isle of Man is an island in the Irish Sea between England and Ireland and is very far from the Brittany coast of France, at least 900 kilometers or 560 miles away. The Isle of Man lead doesn't seem to be a coincidence though. You see, on the 2nd of October, police in the town of Falay, Normandy, received an anonymous letter stating that Yves Godard and his kids were on the Isle of Man. This letter was written clearly and had two sentences. Dr. Godard is alive and is living in the Irish Sea on the Isle of Man. Take this seriously. Other witnesses on the Isle of Man said that they saw Eve with his kids as well and that the little girl was blonde like a mule, and asking for her mother. An interesting fact is that the Isle of Man is known for being a tax haven. And Eve also had a bank account there. A second letter was sent on the 8th of October, telling the investigators that Eve and his children were now on Lewis Island, off the Scottish coast, and that they need to, quote-unquote, save Camille and Marius. Investigators travelled to Lewis Island and were met with hostility by local police. The warrant that they were supposed to have with them never showed up and it made it very difficult for the French police to interview anyone. They did manage, however, to speak to a man selling tickets at the ferry station who very convincingly stated that he saw Eve and the kids stay at the beginning of October. This anonymous letter writer never came forward to say who they were, but handwriting experts determined that it was a woman's handwriting by someone likely in their 60s who happened to be close to Eve Godard. I don't know how you determine this, but interesting. Police gathered a certain number of women, approximately 300 more or less, who knew Eve Godard and tested their handwriting. When no leads turned up from this, they did DNA testing on that same bunch because the stamp on the two letters had been licked and police were able to pull DNA from it. But there were no hits among these women tested either. These report statements or sightings on the Isle of Man and on Lewis Island was the first of a series placing Kudar and his children at various locations all around the world, including South Africa, Miami and on Crete. It was an utter mystery as to where Eve and the kids were. Experts say that the sailing weather and headwinds were excellent during the beginning of September and October and that they could have easily sailed across the Atlantic down to Af Africa with no issues. On the 16th of January in 2000, four months after the Godar family went missing, a fishing boat off of the coast of Bats Island caught a large canvas bag in its net. Inside they found belongings from the entire Goddard family, including children's clothing, a bikini, checkbooks, Eve's driver's license, Marie France's entire purse and all its contents, binoculars and a hammer. Large-scale searches for Marie France's body were conducted in the autumn and winter of 1999 going into 2000, in and around the area where the family had lived with no success. These searches were suspended in mid-January 2000. In May 2000, investigators travelled to the Portuguese island of Madeira. Yves Godard had opened a bank account there and they thought that it might be possible that he might be there due to tax evasion. This lead unfortunately went nowhere, as no bank accounts had been touched since his disappearance. On the 6th of June in 2000, 10 months after the Godard family went missing, a shell fishing boat off of St. Brieuc Bay pulls a skull fragment up in its nets. For some unknown reason, 
They throw it back into the ocean. Like, yeah, human skull, who cares, let's dump it back. Four hours later, however, they pull up an entire human skull. And this one, they decide to keep. DNA testing is done on the skull. And it was concluded that it belonged to six-year-old Camille Goddard. Scientific analysis concluded that it had been in its resting place since at least February 2000. This seemed to lend credit to one of the leading theories that Eve and his children had been in a boat wreck, accidental or not so much accidental, and that everyone on board had perished. This zone, which was the same area where customs had stopped the Goddard family in the Nick on September 2nd, 1999, was then thoroughly searched with a sonar device by a mine hunter lent to them by the French Marines. But to no avail. They found nothing. No further burns were found, nor was the nick. At this point, only one thing was clear. Camille was dead. The investigation took on a new dimension when Godard's business card was found on Sunday 11 February 2001 by someone walking on a beach off the coast of Saint-Jacques de la Mer. On 22 February 2001, a bank card bearing Yves Godard's name was found on the same beach by a resident of Saint-Jacques. Then on 24 May, people walking on the beach found a credit card of Eve, again on that exact same beach. A judge instructed investigators to go over the beach with a fine-tooth comb. They also used a minesweeper and sonar to check the ocean floor surrounding the archipelago, but no traces of the nick were found. On the 3rd of June, however, another credit card of Eve is found by a diver along the shore of the same beach. Investigators are convinced that Eve Goddard had to have stopped at this beach and emptied the contents of his wallet there. The beach is once more combed through, with him even using a tractor to sieve the sand. The investigators are now 100% sure that there was absolutely nothing left at that beach anymore. However, on July 31st, another card of Eve is found on the same beach. This time, it's a health insurance card. They probably said, this is the last one, again, we promise. All of the cards are sent to a laboratory and the results are astounding. It was found that the cards did not spend much time in the water at all before they were discovered. It just was not possible and plausible that they would have been there since September of 1999, which led investigators to believe that someone had put them there one by one over the course of 2001, to be found. Investigators, as well as a lawyer for Marie France's family, believed that an accomplice was working with Eve, wanting people to believe in an accidental death. Nothing of Eve or the family was found in 2002, but on 8 August 2003, a briefcase believed to belong to Eve Goddard was found in St. Brieuc Bay. However, investigators have never confirmed its authenticity, so more than likely this was probably a hoax. On the 13th of September 2006, a femur and tibia are found in the Cascade Trench. 70 miles north of the Brittany town of Roscoff. They are determined to belong to Eve Goddard and finally confirmed after all of this time that Eve Goddard, along with Camille, have passed away. A French Navy mine hunter was dispatched to the area to try and find any trace of the sailing boat as well as any remnants or bones of the rest of the family, but nothing was found. A search for Marie France's body was resumed on 27 January 2007, a month after Eve's death was announced, following a tip-off in an anonymous letter that told them to search the storeroom of a cemetery less than 5 kilometers or 3 miles from the Godard home. There they found bones, which the letter claimed belonged to Marie France Godard. However, analysis revealed that this was not true. On the 14th of December 2008, another credit card belonging to Yves Godard is found in pristine condition on the Chappal Beach. In 2011, Eric Lemasson published a book titled The Murder of Dr. Godard, which shed light on a new theory 
relating to there being financial reasons behind the disappearance, even including links to the Mafia. The book highlighted several murders of people affiliated to the French Trade Union, the Confederation for the Defense of Salesmen and Craftspeople, in which Godard played a very active role as a member. On the 14th of September 2012, the examining magistrate ordered the case to be closed. The court stated that the only conclusion that can be 100% eliminated is that the family simply disappeared on a boating excursion, and that the most probable explanation would be that Eve killed his family, but they were not able to prove anything. The case was thus dismissed due to lack of being able to charge anyone with a crime. In February 2018, a child's skull was found at a beach in Plerin, sparking speculation that it might belong to Marius, but no confirmations have been made by the authorities that this was in fact his skull. Confirmation of Eve's death brought about an end to much public interest in the case, but the mystery of the disappearance of his wife, whose body has never been found, and the deaths of Eve and Camille, as well as the very likely death of Marius, remain unresolved. It was either an accident, a murder-suicide perpetrated by Godot, a family annihilation carried out by a third party making it look like murder-suicide. But I guess we will never know. So that is it for today's case. I hope you enjoyed it and I am sorry if I butchered any French words. I'm sure there are some that I totally messed up. And as always, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions and theories on this case because we don't have a clear-cut answer. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please remember to leave me a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, bye!